What dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So Baro is here on all platforms. Let's go take a look at what he's got. I have not actually looked at it yet, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and guess it's not going to be super amazing. Uh, so yeah, if, if Baro is pretty bad, which I'm assuming he, he will be, make sure that you are sta saving up ducats for Super Baro, where I don't know which one of these tickets it would be, but basically, yeah, this one here. So... July 20th at 11 a.m. ET until July 27th at 11 a.m. ET. If you bought the Tenocon digital ticket, you can go to the Super Borrow that will have everything. So just remember that uh, before we go over this probably underwhelming borrow that I haven't even investigated yet. But as far as which planet he's on, it's going to be on Mercury, I believe. Yep, Mercury is where Borrow's at. So not really holding out hope for there being good new stuff here. And yes, there is supposed to be a new item at Borrow every time he shows up. And when I say new, I mean new to his inventory. Like, a thing he's never actually brought before. Not like a new item in the game. So that means, like, last time he was here, he had the Ivara in action glyph. I have no idea where that came from originally, but he had never brought it previously uh, before the visit last time. So now he can bring the Ivara in action glyph. So it'll probably be like Lavos in action glyph or something as his new item because I'm assuming DE's working on Jade Shadows right now uh, and not really, you know... Making new prime, it would be great if we got a new prime mod for like Bane of the Murmur. That would be great for elite Archimedians, but uh, yeah, probably not yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess it because um, yeah, I feel like I feel like people would be talking about it already a bunch already if it was already good. All right, so let's see. Okay, there you go. Excalibur Proto Armor in Action Glyph. So called it. This was this came from somewhere else before, and now Borrow has it. If you want to get it for seventy five ducats and sixty thousand credits. Okay, beyond that, we have uh, Primed Fever Strike, a very good mod for melees, a must-have mod, honestly. Jolt, a very good mod for pistols, especially with those green shard corrosive builds going around nowadays. This is a must-have mod that only comes from Baro. So honestly, you could pick up a bunch of extra copies of this to sell in the future as well. Full Contact Impact Damage for Shotguns, a mod that is literally never used, ever. I have 30 copies of it. I think it drops like Eidolons or something. A really, really bad one. And then we've got the Mark of the Beast on six melee kills within six seconds, only for throwing melee weapons. Increased status chance and critical chance for secondary weapons for 24 seconds. So it only works with like Glaives, Serratas, you know, Falcors, Zorus, all that kind of stuff. And it will, after you get six kills, you will be able to buff your secondary weapon, which would go great with this Jolt mod. But unfortunately, this removes one mod slot from your actual Glaive. Not like the Glaive needs every mod slot to kill stuff, but yeah, it's a very niche thing right here. Uh, it's at least kind of a little fun, cool thing. It does work on Mesa's pistols as well, so that's kind of nice. Alright, let's just do a full inventory review of what he's got as far as what you should get. We can briefly talk about uh, yesterday's video and what I've kind of come to the conclusion from after reading all those comments, responding to all those comments. Thank you guys also for all the support in the previous video. Alright, so as far as mods... Make sure you have both of these ones, Jolt and Prime Fever Strike. You need both of these. They're both really good. If I was to pick one or the other, I mean, Jolt's slightly cheaper. It's a lot less endo and credits to max it out. Uh, and Prime Fever Strike is a Prime mod, so it's going to be like a ton of endo, a ton of credits to max it out. But yeah, so make sure you get both of these, though. And if you're looking to like sell things in the future, Jolt's always a pretty easy sell. But wait a couple weeks or months to sell this, to be honest. All right, as far as appearance things... I mean, it's going to really be up to you if you think this stuff looks good. Uh, we got a Nidus Immortal skin, which exists. And we got some Prisma Nabaris, like some little bat wings on the side of your character. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the rest of the stuff is really, really up to you, honestly. Fade Path Ephemera is really cheap. Only 15 ducats and 1,000 credits if you don't have any Ephemeras yet. As far as weapons, we got the Vastalok. Nice. And we got the Viper Wraith, uh, which has a augment called Skull Shocks for infinite ammo. I'd say... The Vastalock is definitely worth having. It's a like a slash melee shotgun thing that can do very good stuff with Shattering Impact mod. And also can do some decent damage as well. So I like the Vastalock a, well, a, a lot. It only comes from Borrow nowadays. This used to be a, a Twitch drop item from like Tenocon. So if you don't have this, make sure you get it. It also can be a pretty decent item to sell for Plat in the future. As long as you don't like, level it up at all, you can sell this to other players. For the final miscellaneous tab here, we've got stuff that is not really super worth it, to be honest. we got a poster I didn't even bother buying in the first place. Uh, we've got some cosmetics. We've got a Mantis Prisma skin. 
So that's pretty cool. That's just really cool. But uh, yeah, not really the, the most popular landing craft. So yeah, overall recommendations, uh, Jolt, Prime Fever Strike, and the Bastalock. And then uh, the Viper Wraith if you want the Mastery as well. It's not really a heavily used weapon. Basically, if you want to get this for Deep Archimedians, you could get this if you're forced to use a weapon you don't like to use. All right, so now that we talked about that, let's get over, let's go over some of the, uh, the feedback on the previous Deep Archimedian like mech nerf video and what I've come to the conclusion of. So, yeah, first off, guys, thank you so much for all the responses on there. I did want to hear everyone's opinion on that on that video. And, you know, th there was a good, there was a good, like, wide range of feedback. It's like, okay, well, Gaz, Mr. God, roll ribbons on everything. It's not as easy for some of us to do this because we don't have a God roll for everything. And it's like, okay, well, I understand where you're coming from, but also, there ain't no way a God roll ribbons is going to make the stug actually good in a deep, uh, deep elite Archimedian. Archimedia, not Archimedian. So, I think to an extent, me, being prepared can only get you so far when you have that terrible of weapons. So yes, I do think that DE should add a way, way to re-roll your gear in the Elite Archimedia in some way. Rather that be, you know, how about 50, how about this, 50 Voss 4 to re-roll your items. That means if you re-roll your items, you get stuff you like, you can actually get the 50 Voss 4 back after doing the Elite Archimedia. Because, you know, 50 Vosphor is really not that much. But if they want to make it where you can reroll stuff, you have to make it a somewhat prohibitive cost. If you make it where it's like, okay, just some fair right to reroll your Deep Archimedia stuff, we just reroll until we got all the God roll and good stuff. Like I got Dante, the Burst in Prime, whatever, you know, whatever good things you want to run for that day. So they would need to make the cost of rerolling somewhat annoying. Like, you know, maybe like Echo Vokas or boss four like i said or like ribbon slivers something that is not really the easiest to do but something you could go and grind out you're like well i want to do this elite archimedia but i don't want to you know i don't want to use my only 50 boss for let me go do a couple missions of void cascade let me go kill a couple acolytes to reroll this stuff and hopefully i get something better now yes random loadouts in the first place does is just kind of annoying period uh but de to design the content apparently with that in mind additionally some players need to understand that you don't need to do every Elite Archimedia modifier every week. If it's too annoying for you, or it's like, you know, you don't want to have energy drain and health drain and use the flux rifle and, you know, limbo or whatever, you don't have to get every loot item every week. But I think a lot of players just feel like they have to do it for some reason. They have to, they have to do every modifier every week, or like almost every modifier every week. Like everything besides like one frame, so you can get everything but the 50 Voss for at the end. I think some some people just need to understand that it's if, if it's too annoying, it's not worth your time, not worth your effort. You just don't need to get it. It's not like there's a time limit on like, okay, well, if you don't get like all the if you don't get three tau shards this week, you'll never get a tau shard ever again. That is not really how it goes. Um, and additionally, I think that also. Uh, the mech ex the mech getting nerfed, it really boils down to public matchmaking squads. People not knowing the mechanics, people pushing the button. What does this what does this shiny button do? Summons the mech Eximus. Uh oh, who did that? Now you're there, you're sitting there with the flux rifle on limbo, and you're like, what am I gonna do about this? There's enemies attacking the objective. There was a glitched out snake doing triple damage to the objective. It was just not a good situation. So that's why they changed it. For, I think for the purposes of public matchmaking disorganized squads, people not knowing what to do properly, like not on the mechanics of the game, and summoning the uh, summoning the mech. I'm sure some of you guys say it was trolling, but they might have not even known what the button did in the first place. So I do appreciate all support on the video, guys. I know it was, uh, you know, a little bit controversial. I knew that putting it up. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that we are all able to, you know, have a good discussion there. It wasn't like, you're dumb because you think the mech was was not strong or something like that. You know, like, it was, for the most part, pretty civil. And I appreciate you guys... Uh, treating it that way and um, yeah there will be more you know controversial discussion videos in the future uh, if there are con what I view as controversial choices being made so that will continue and yeah I hope you guys uh, enjoy the channel as I enjoy making the videos on the channel so I'll be back uh, with a stream and a video probably tomorrow I have someone coming over tonight so we're just gonna hang out and do some stuff like that so you guys have a great time farming out borrow get that vast lock get that jolt get that prime fever strike and I'll see you guys in the next one take it easy peace